what's going on episode two commute video it's not friday but um i took off friday so i'll give you a wednesday version of the friday commute episode two um i do appreciate all the feedback about the first episode um i know again a lot of people think recording while you're driving or recording in the car is stupid and not worth their time but like i said treat this like a podcast every time i make one of these videos don't you know watch it from your car when you're driving to work or you know, i mean listen to it in your car or listen to it on your headphones when you're going running something like that unless you enjoy this view which by the way this view reminds me i have to get my ass on a diet in a little bit because um, it should not be here, you know, you know what I mean? Anyway, so what the hell are we talking about today? Um, we're talking about yield max, we're talking about income, we're talking about all that jazz. Um, I've been making a lot of videos lately. I try to do one a day now, I try to do a short every now and then because again, I'm getting, you know, I, I'm getting the love. I'm getting good feedback. I'm getting a lot of bad feedback too, which is fine. Um, because think about it. If you're looking from the outside and you see some, you know, some guy posting, making, you know, 50% dividend yield and you, you don't know anything about yield max funds or, you know, any, anything like that, you're going to be like, this is, you know, bullshit. This is scam. This is like, it's the dumbest thing you could ever do. So, Honestly, I don't blame them for the negative comments, so keep them coming. I'm not going to try to change their mind either. That's I've, I've learned from that. That's a waste of my time. Um, but I'll, you know, speak up, you know. Let, let us know how you feel. If it's stupid, let me hear it. You know, I'm all for it. Um, I'm, if I'm doing something wrong too, uh, you know, again, I change my mind all the time. But, again, the point what I'm doing right now is income, income, income. So, obviously, I have other portfolios. I have 401ks, me and my wife. And that's all, you know, that's my wife's in dividend stocks, dividend growth stocks, and my 401k is just in growth stocks, aggressive growth. And that's it. Um, this account is specifically for income. Now, obviously, it, it could go south, and I'm taking that risk. I know that. Could I lose it all tomorrow? Yeah, obviously, you could lose anything. Any investment can go down to zero. So that argument is kind of, you know, useless, if you ask me, because if you invest in the stock market, you're already, you know, taking the risk. So back on track here. Um, uh, I want to talk about Tesla. They uh, they had a 2:30 call, which, as you know, you know they sell calls. They earn premium. They had a 2:30 call that was expiring on Friday, and they were it was not looking good. I think the stock price yesterday for Tesla was 257. So they have to cover that gap, right? When you sell a call for a strike price of a certain amount, you're committed to honoring that. Obviously, they don't own the shares. So they have to cover the gap between the 230 and either that current price or whatever they roll it to. So yesterday, you know, again, I'm trying to explain this as basic as possible because I know a lot of people, they don't do options, they don't want to do options, or they're just learning options, and it's it's a lot, I know. I, I learned options maybe two years ago. I read, a, I read a, a book or two, and I've also did options and I've lost a lot of money so I've learned a lot by losing money uh, but I'm happy to tell you guys at least what I know you know due to my bad moves uh, but anyway they rolled it they rolled a 230 call into a I believe it's a 245 call into next week since it's such a quick turnaround and a massive jump in price they did not earn premium on that roll. In fact, they had to pay out premium on that roll. 
because again, they were so bad in the hole that they had to do something. I mean, it's a smart move because they had to get out of that position. I don't necessarily agree yesterday was the best day, but then again, I'm not the expert. Uh, they are. So, um, yeah, time would tell. And I, again, if you guys don't know options, and even if you do, I highly recommend going on the website Monday through Friday and just looking at the intraday trades on top of tracking the current holdings. You know, it's all on the website. You can see what they're doing and then why they do it. You know, you can try to make sense of it. Uh, if not, you can watch my channel and I'll try to make sense of it. Um, so yeah, they moved it and they lost the premium in the process, which may have been reflected in the stock price because if you look, Tesla was up what, 7% yesterday? And Tesla about 1%. So maybe they took it off the top. Because I know when they gain premium, that gets added to the stock price, which eventually gets taken for the distribution. So I assume on the other side, if they're paying premium, they're taking that from, you know, stock price as well. So needless to say, that move yesterday, although a good long-term move, short-term, we will probably feel it on the distribution coming in September. Um, I think we got paid, what, 70-something cents last month. My guess, and again, I, I just started tracking the intradays and everything this closely recently, so I don't know how bad it was before, what moves they were making, but if I was to throw a number out there, it'd be around 50 cents. Um, 50 to 60. I'm hope, again, I'm hoping in the 60 range. So, that's at least my opinion on that. Um, what else? So, I bought into MSFO. Sounds like a boy band or something. That's the Microsoft Yield Max Fund. And, um, you know, I love Microsoft. You can't go wrong with that stock. Uh, it's not as volatile as the others. It's a little more volatile than Apple, I think. Uh, so it's going to pay, you know, decent dividend. So I'll, I'm going to build up that stock as well, that ETF, and go from there. I'm not buying uh, Disney's, which is D-I-S-O, I believe. I just, you know, I don't know. I just haven't been a fan of Disney for a while. Yes, they're way too woke, but I won't get into that. Um, and But they're, you know, they even outside of that, just making stupid. So I don't know. I really don't know how I feel about it long term. Ever since they cut their dividend, which to begin with, they were paying semi-annually, which is kind of weak. But um, they cut that dividend. I, I jumped out. I'm like, I'm done. So I'm not going to. If I won't invest in them as an individual stock, why the hell would, why the hell would I invest in them in a, a cup of call strategy? Um, I will not. So anyway, I own all of the Yield Max except Disney. So, I don't know. We'll see what else comes out. But I'm, obviously, I'm not going to continue to just buy all of them. If I like the underlying, I'm going to buy it. If I don't, I won't. Um, but again, yeah, my strategy is income, high income, but safe income. I want my capital to stay flat or up, you know, or move up, obviously. So, when I have money in my account, which right now I don't really money um, until obviously you know today I'm getting paid tomorrow I'm getting paid by Svol and tomorrow I get paid by my company so I'll put an additional you know 250 into that um, into the account then so I'll have maybe another 300 300 something on top of whatever so I can get back to my strategy which I buy 10 stocks 10 ETFs per day um, based on the biggest discount. If I am ahead overall, you know, in gains capital-wise for that ETF, I will not buy any. Uh, so like NVIDIA, NVIDIA, I'm up. I'm up 10%. I'm not buying that again. Because uh, I know there's going to be a day it'll, it'll go back down. And if not, then guess what? My yield on cost on that one is going to be sitting pretty. So I'll just let it ride. And the other ones, I'm up on Coney too, believe it or not. So, I'm not going to buy more Coney. Let it ride. I'm down on Tesla because I'm a dumbass and I bought it all together at 
I don't even know what price. Um, I didn't. I should have chunked it in. Uh, so Tesla, I'm I'm gonna be down for a while, um, and I think I'm down on uh, Amazon AMZ. So you know, I will buy chunks of the ETFs where my average is below the cost. You know, well my cost basis is below the. Um, I'm sorry, above the current stock price. So that's that's it. It's not really complicated, but that's my strategy. Um, and once all of my funds are in the green, guess what? I'm just going to build up cash, build up cash, build up cash. And then I'll buy when one of them dips. Or in the same, at the same time, I'm actually going to spend that time to research other um, high, not as high yielding, but high yielding stocks that I, I need to start diversifying on. Because, yes, these, of course, these are very, you know, these are higher, higher risk investments that I'm comfortable with now, but maybe five years from now, I'm not necessarily comfortable with, you know, say triple my, of what I have in there now, all in yield max, right? I want to, I want to spread it out a little more into what I don't know. Um, obviously I did as fall, so I'm comfortable with that one, but I need to take my time. People have been talking about CLM, this is, by the way, that. That's one of the first stocks I bought because I was chasing yields as a rookie and I, I ended up selling it, you know, not that long after, but turns out, I guess it seems to be a decent, decent, uh, closed ended fund as long as you know how to work it. I don't know how to work it, so I'm not going to buy it. Um, I will try to research that and maybe one day post a video. Um, and then what else am I looking at? I have to look at... Uh, was it SPI, SPYI, and uh, Jeppy? I want to look at those two. I just want to see their prospectus and see what their covered call strategy is. Do they sell calls at the money or out of the money? You know, what are they doing? I want to know. And if they sell it out of the money, then I'm interested because obviously I could, you know, they're kind of like yield max, but they're invested in the ETF. I really hope Yieldmax buys more, you know, has more underlying ETFs that they, they get into, which I know they will. They have a, they have a list, um, of a few, but, uh, but yeah, so that's what I'm doing. Nothing, nothing fancy. Um, I did, well, I had a discord. I recently got it back because, um, one of the YouTubers I watch, I am Kamar, as a discord so i figured out you know i'll join the discussion there uh, which by the way if you have not followed i am kumar he, he's a uh, you know he's has a similar strategy as me he's very entertaining and he has live shows where you know you can get in the conversation which is great um he just lets him, you know everyone get in the conversation he speaks honest like me speaks the truth and you know it's a good channel so check them out another channel to check out by the way uh ethan his last name starts with the g sorry ethan but um can't remember it offhand but uh he also has a channel he does he does car videos too which kind of motivated me to get back to you know i'm driving an hour to work why not if people are listening watching my content um i'm gonna go back to using utilizing this hour at least do 20 or 30 minutes of uh you know talking stocks so thank you ethan for bringing back the car video and i thought it was hilarious when you said yesterday that people were uh ripping on you for who's gonna listen to a guy in the jeep because i got the same feedback a year or two ago just people ripping on me for like you know what the hell is this like, what, just guard you know just ripping but like you said it's not it's not about where the video is taken, how the video is taken, it's about the content in the video. So, if people like your content, if people want to hear what you have to say, then who gives a shit? You know, where I'm recording, does it really matter? Obviously, yes. If you're trying to watch a video, this is, you know, not exciting. But if you're just listening to content, uh, the car video is fine. I, again, treat it as a podcast. So. Anyway, uh, that being said, uh, hopefully the uh, noise is
it's not raining today. I apologize. I know one person hopes it rains because it's they said they enjoyed the sound. But um, hopefully overall it's just a quiet, you know, outside noise. Uh, that being said, back to Discord. I did uh, reactivate, not reactivate, but I, I, I got my Discord back. And I do have a Discord channel, which um, if I remember, I'll, I'll put it in the link of this video. Um, and I say if I remember because I have to post this in the parking lot at work and then I'm rushing into work and I forget everything and forget it. So I'll try to. Um, I'll post, like I said, I'll post it when I get to work. Uh, I'll try to post a link in the comments section. And we'll just use that as further conversation because obviously you can't have a full out conversation on the comments too much uh, because it does get confusing and it's hard to track. A live conversation is always cool, so use that, not just for me, for like-minded people. Um, the point of the channel is retiring. Oh, here's the rain. Holy shit. You can't... Oh, my God. I swear, every time I commute... I don't commute much. Two days a week, it's always raining. But, um, but yeah, the topic is retiring on dividends. So, let's get a lot of like-minded people in there. We'll just talk. We'll just talk. You know, because people... You know, want, they don't want to work. Most people don't want to be, I'll say, forced to work their whole lives until they're 59 and a half or 65. It's nice to have the option to retire early or to have the option to work wherever the hell you please for less income. Because most people, well, you know, their current job is they pay a lot of money, it's a very stressful job, and they rely on that income, but if you can replace that income, or even replace most of the income, you could essentially work wherever, you know, at a lesser paying job that's less stressful, that's closer to your home, or even work part time, and that having that option would be amazing. Again, my personal goal is to, yeah, I want to replace my income. But like I said, I mean, I just want the ability to retire. Will I? I don't know. And maybe it's going to be hard because if I can actually replace my income in dividends, I'm going to want to keep reinvesting that to make it even more and more. You know, you get greedy. You know, you'll, you'll want to build it up, build it up, build it up. So who the hell knows what the future holds? But all I know is I'm aggressively investing to get there. And... I don't care if my my portfolio is almost at 40,000, it drops to 20 tomorrow. I really don't care. I'm staying, you know, focused. Eye on the prize, because Tesla could tank, right? And that downside, I could feel it, right? If they tank, they get cut in half. It happens, guess what? I'm gonna be averaging my ass in there. Boom, 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 invest. I'll be all in Tesla. I'm already a freaking 50% Tesla, but um, if it drops like that, yeah, I'll be buying more. I mean, I watched a video with Musk the other day. The guy's a genius. Worst case is something happened to him, but which I didn't even I'm not considering that. But uh, hopefully he has a he's building a strong team around him. Um, but anyway, I think um, I think that's it for today's commute. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it, like the other one. If you did, leave a comment. Um, if not, leave a comment. And let's see the feedback. And then, um, like I said, feel free to join the Discord or don't. I don't, you know, whatever you want to do. And then I'll, I'll just keep making content as I can. All right. Thanks for watching. Later.